Welcome to Swift Family Ropes and Expedition. Glad you're here. This is our home. If you're new, we're seven people traveling. I'm a travel nurse and... I'm a stay-at-home dad. We road school. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. He's a jack of all trades. He does it all. <laughs> so I get to plan where we go, what we do, manage the RV park, manage the kids, the pool, the sign, you know, whatever we're going to do. He's the mastermind. I get to have all the fun while she yeah. has to pay the bills. This week, he planned for us to go to San Diego, which is fantastic. Uh, we were there for Halloween. Lots of kids, lots of families. This park knocked it out of the park yeah. because they had so many things for the kids to do. Yeah. And the kids didn't even miss the typical Halloween activities. That was an easy decision to make to get away to San Diego. The RV park we're at here in Long Beach just didn't really have a lot going on in LA. Just Halloween, yeah. they were talking about not having it. We were like, we're not having that. We're out of here. And, <laughs> and we just, we had been to this park once before when we, in the, if you caught the Tijuana episode, uh, this is where we stayed at Chula Vista. Um, and it's right on the bay. So you walk out the gate, and there's the boats and the staff is so welcoming. They've got a pool and a hot tub. Yeah. And, we knew exactly what spot we wanted yeah. as well. So last time we were there, we reserved the primo spot yeah. for all the Halloween festivities. We had a great time. <laughs> but I, I wanted to just talk about, recently someone asked us about how do we really manage the isolation that we feel as we're on the road? Of course, you know, we're away from friends, away yeah. from family. And that question comes up quite frequently. It's a double-edged sword. One way you miss your family and friends, for sure, the FaceTime. Right. Because FaceTime and Zoom or, you know, whatever apps you're going to use to communicate isn't doesn't always fill you up. It doesn't always make you feel like that's enough. It leaves you wanting. <laughs> it's a sacrifice but it's an intentional sacrifice because mm -hmm. you have your eyes on something else and that's time together as a family. Right. I never say this, but I always feel like saying, have, have you been in an RV park? <laughs> there is no isolation yeah. at all. Obviously not in the rig, but especially not outside the rig. Everybody's so neighborly. You know, how do, I always wonder, how do you deal with it as an intern? I, how do you, I mean, everybody's like, everybody's I friend. have a very long drive to work. It's perfect. <laughs> I enjoy it actually. <laughs> No, it's not a very long drive. And I would say though, uh, we've talked about the great communities that we've come in contact with before. One of the things we most appreciate about RV living is the sense of community. Everybody is there for everybody else. There are inherent challenges built into RV life. And unlike brick and mortar living, which really lends itself to isolation, when you live in an RV, you are in a community. Everybody has faced the challenges of hooking and unhooking, parking, electrical, plumbing. When you arrive in an RV park, the attitude of your neighbor is, hey, need a hand? Is there anything I can help you with? Neighborhood living for us, shoot, we're lucky if it's three, four days, maybe even a week before we knock on the neighbor's door with cookies. It's just so different especially in this time of COVID, which is encouraging people to isolate, full-time travelers have the solution. We've noticed this particularly with people living on boats and RVs. It's like this mentality of, I'm gonna make the most out of this day, even if I need a little help making these memories. As we are approaching the winter, and a lot of people go through some stuff, holidays, and just with the culmination of whatever you're experiencing, depression, isolation with everything that's going on in the COVID, country. COVID, quarantine, yeah. you know, there's a lot of election tension. Yeah. We just want to say, hang in there with whatever you're going through. We found a great place in Chula Vista to mm -hmm. feel at home and feel at home and kind of soak in some of the warmth of a holiday holiday that we really love, mm -hmm. which is Halloween. It can be like that for you. You don't have to be a full-time traveler. It's all a mindset. Like I have the mindset that I know how hard this is, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. reach out, you know, and you can do that in a neighborhood. 
it's hard right now for a lot of folks. Yeah. And so you don't have to be in an RV or traveling to think like this and to, and to reach across the aisle and say, hey, is there something I can do for you? Isolation is really dragging people down right now. And so we are thankful for this community and any place where we feel connected. And we're thankful for you. So we're gonna take you to Chula Vista. Once we found out that our RV park in Long Beach wasn't doing anything special for Halloween, we made plans immediately to head to San Diego. We found that with these RV resorts and parks, it's the little things that make it feel like home been here before on our last trip we scouted out a spot thinking ahead to Halloween it's a larger park and we knew they had a lot of fun things planned but it's the the little things that they do quick story I had planned to come to a spooky movie night by the pool with popcorn and the person in charge of the event lost the popcorn so our kids were a little disappointed and the person in charge found out about that and within five minutes of the close of the event, they were at our RV site, knocking on our door with six bags of popcorn. She sent security to find popcorn and just over and above, we call it the Disney principle. It's when companies put customer service at the top and they bend over backwards with little things, just little things to make you feel special. And that is how we feel at this RV park. They've got like 250 sites here and their attention to detail is impeccable. Each site has a trash can. Security came by last night and noticed that our bikes weren't locked up. Knocked on our door around nine o'clock and just said, hey, you might wanna lock these up. There's lots of homeless folks that love free bikes. And they're always making rounds and checking on people, picking up trash, making sure the place is clean. They do have plans to move this park less than a mile away so the new site is under construction that's kind of exciting they have these vacation homes that have four bedrooms i mean they they would sleep several families they're about three four hundred bucks a night depending on the season and in the new location opening up in april 2021 they have 40 of these things your premium sites of course overlook the bay and you've got your pull through sites and back in sites to save a little bit of money. You have this really cute little dog park and outdoor seating area for picnics. You've got a sand pit for kids to play in, for horseshoes, a little putting green, and a gate that leads right out to the bay. I highly recommend a sunset walk along the pier. It is gorgeous. You get the sun setting on one side of you over the water and the moon coming up on the other.